والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. In Islam, we have what are known as غايات ووسائل. We have what is known as the end goal of things and the wasa'il and the means to get to those things. In Islam, worship has a goal. And that goal of worship is what is known in Arabic as istimariya, is continuity, to continue doing worship. For an example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about fasting, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyam kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qabrikum la'allakum, ya'ni al-ghaya, tattakun. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who came before you, so that perhaps you may attain taqwa. So fasting was the goal, it was the wasila, and the end, it was the, excuse me, fasting was the wasila, the means. And the goal of fasting was taqwa, to achieve or to attain taqwa. Fasting was not the goal within itself. Fasting was just a means by which we used to attain the goal. Evidenced by the fact that if you did not attain taqwa, or taqwa was not your intention when you were fasting, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of you leaving off your food and your drink. Because that's not the goal. As Allah subhanahu the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِي فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَ أَنْ يَضْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَ That whoever does not leave off قَوْلَ الزُّورِ Giving a false testimony or lying and then acting upon those things, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of you leaving off your food and your drink. Because by doing that, it is counterproductive to taqwa. So therefore, you're not attaining the end goal. So therefore, the means is not necessary. The end goal of worship is to do worship all the way until the end, to see it out all the way until your life is over. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعْبُدَ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ That worship your Lord until death comes to you. Don't stop with the worship until death comes to you. Not until things get difficult. Not until, you know, you feel like, you know, you don't need to worship Allah anymore. Right? Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until death overcomes you. Death overtakes you. Istimra is to be continuous. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Ya Rasulullah, Ayyu a'malin ahabbu ila Allah? فَقَالَ نَبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلَّمْ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked, O Messenger of Allah, what are the deeds that are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Listen to his response. What are the deeds that are the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلَّمْ The deeds that are done most continuously even if they're small. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves continuity. To continue doing something even though um, it becomes difficult, there's some mashaqqa in some of the acts of worship, there are some difficulty, there are some difficulties in it. But even with the difficulty, as the Prophet وسلم, he said, in the that the greater the struggle, the greater the reward. The greater the struggle, the greater the reward. The greater the hardship, the greater the reward. So there's not, that's not to mean that some of the acts of worship are not going to have some difficulty in them. Yes, absolutely. But even in the difficulty, there is reward. But the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what are the deeds that are most beloved to Allah? He said, those that are done continuously. That you do it continuously, even if they're small. Even if they're small. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't care about how great the deed is. He cares about the continuity of the deed even if it's small. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As He came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet instructed him Sum min al-shahr thalatha ayyam Fast three days out of the month. He said, Ya Rasulullah, inni la utiqu akthar min dhalik. I can do more than that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said وَصُومُ كُلَّ يَوْمُ الْخَمِيسِ 
والاثنين then fast every Thursday and Monday fast every Monday and every Thursday he said Ya Rasulullah inni utiku akthar min dhalik I can do more than that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said well then fast every other day the fast of Dawood every other day he said inni utiku akthar min dhalik I can do more than that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said laysa hunaka akbar min dhalik there is nothing greater than that. That is, the, that is the, 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 the greatest, that is the maximum amount to fast every other day. Abdullah bin Amr, when he got older, he said, Laytani ittakhadtu ruqsa to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Li'annahu la yastamirru fi kibari sinnihi la yastamirru. Fanadil. He became remorseful later on in life. He said, I wish I had taken the ruqsa, the allowance that the Prophet Sallallahu was trying to give me because now I'm older and now I can't continue fasting every other day. You see what happens? He wasn't able, the Prophet Sallallahu as Aisha said, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu always gave his companions ma He always gave them what they had the ability to do. Never gave them more because it wasn't about doing more. It was about doing little but being continuous in that little bit that you do. Being continuous in the little that you do. The Prophet وسلم, he turned to one of the companions after the salah. He said, He said, don't be like such and such who used to get up at night and pray to hug your prayer, but then he left it off. He abandoned it. He's warning, here's the Prophet وسلم, warning a person not to be like such and such. Don't exemplify the same behavior as him because he used to get up at night and pray and then he stopped. And then he stopped. Some of the scholars like Abu Hanifa and others were of the opinion that Qiyamul Layl, Tahaj Salat, Tahajab, it was the sixth Salat. If there was another prayer that was obligatory, it would have been Tahajab. So much so that some of the scholars of the past never even left off to Hajj. The Prophet وسلم, even when he was traveling, he never left off the winter prayer. Winter prayer, at least pray, get up at night and pray one rakah. And if you start something, then you continue with it. You don't start something and then stop. The Prophet وسلم, said about himself, when he put on his armor to go out to fight, he said that when a prophet puts on his armor, he does not take it off until he goes out and fight and either loses his life or returns with the victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. But once he puts his armor on, he does not take it off. So the same thing applies with our worship. Once we begin worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't reach a point where we just stop worshiping. Think about Muslims who just get to a point where they stop praying. You don't make salat anymore. A'udhu billah. How do you get to a point in your life where you don't pray anymore? And you know, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never test any of us with any of that because He could possibly test us with that. Alhamdulillah, for many of us, the salah is not our fitna. But for some, salah is a fitna for them. So, you know, being continuous and doing little is not about major. And I'll leave you with this last example. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that he saw in a dream. And he heard in the dream the footsteps of Bilal before his own footsteps. When he woke up, he went to Bilal and he asked him, Bilal, how is it that I heard your footsteps in paradise before my own? What is it that you are doing? What is this deed that you're doing that has given you this, this bounty, this bubble? And he said, nothing, O Messenger of Allah, other than the fact that كُلَّمَا تَوَضَّعْتُ رَأَيْتُ لِلَّهِ حَقٌ عَلَيَّ أَنْ أُصَلِّيَ رَقَعْتِهِ فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَبِيمًا فَبِيمًا he said nothing. I'm not doing anything great or out of the ordinary. Other than the fact that every time I make wudu, every time I make wudu, I see that Allah has a right over me that I pray to rak'ah while I'm in wudu. And the Prophet wasallam said, then it is because of those two rak'ah that I hear your footsteps in paradise before my own. Showing you the, is, the istimrar, the, continue, the continuity. Every time you make wudu, you pray to rak'ah. Every time. It's the consistency. We're looking for that one big deed that we can do that's going to get us into paradise. And it may not be one big deed, but it may be a million little deeds that you do that are continuous. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best.
wa sallama tasleeman kathira. And one of the things that, and before ending, and just being solution oriented, one of the things that will help you to be mustamir, will be continuous in your worship, is number one, being mukhlas, being sincere in your worship, and doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are doing your worship for other than Allah, then eventually when you are not receiving attention, then you are going to decrease in your enthusiasm. If no one is watching you, no one is praising you, no one is thanking you for your worship, right? If you're not getting the acknowledgement that you're looking for, then quite naturally your enthusiasm is going to dwindle. Because your enthusiasm was only there because of acknowledgement. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the hypocrites, and he said that the hypocrites, when they stand for the prayer, they stand in a lazy state. Kusala. You are un nas. They do it only to show off in front of the people. And they only remember Allah a little. They only they stand for the prayer only because people are watching them. Only so people can say, MashaAllah, I saw him for Salatul Fajr today. I saw him for Salatul Isha. It's almost like we're using the Salat to validate our Shahada. <coughs> but when you're doing worship so people can see you, then quite naturally when people stop paying attention, then your enthusiasm is going to dwindle. But being mukhlis, doing your worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Umar used to supplicate, Oh Allah, do not make anyone a shariq, do not make anyone a partner in my worship with you. That my worship is solely for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two is to surround yourself with people of ibadah. Surround yourself with people of ibadah. Feed off of the energy of other people that are around you that worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three for men, going to the masjid to worship. When you pray in your home, wallah al you pray in a lazy state. Unlike when you come to the masjid, there's a certain energy when you walk into the masjid. When you walk into the musalla floor and you pray your turaka sunnah and you sit down and you make dhikr or you make dua and you read Quran until the iqamah is called and then when you stand for the prayer in that state you stand with more enthusiasm as opposed to you watching TV at home you hear the adhan go off on your phone you turn the TV off, you go in the bathroom make wudu and you stand for the prayer and as soon as the prayer is over you turn the TV right back on and go back to sitting on the couch that prayer is nowhere near in comparison to the enthusiasm that you would have if you prayed in the masjid. And of course, lastly, to make dua, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to give you zeal and to give you, you know, that enthusiasm that you need when it comes to worship. And to give you the istimrar, give you continuity in your worship, allow you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until death comes to you. And don't make worship a pit stop that I'm only worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the time being. When I get a good job, I don't need worship anymore. When I get married, I don't need to worship anymore. You know, when I buy my new house and I get into my new home and, you know, and get settled, I don't really need to worship anymore. When I'm done with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't need worship anymore because I got from Allah what I wanted. We make dua to Allah. Oh, Allah, bless me with this, bless me with this. And then when we get it, we forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah mentions in the Quran that we call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are in a state of need. He said, but then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you safety, gives you what you ask for, then you, 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 you go on as if, as if you never even made dua to us before. As, you, as if you never even supplicated to us. Like you, you don't need us anymore. MashaAllah tabarakallah. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word us, it doesn't reply, it doesn't um, uh, mean plural, it doesn't mean plurality. It is the generality of ta'weem, it shows, you know, uh, magnificence. It is the we, is, is the plural plurality of, of, of authority, not the plurality that shows more than one, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was best with sallallahu ala nabi Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله